Welcome, everybody. Um, so my name is Nikki Watt. Um, I'm a CTO of, uh, at a company called Open Credo, and we're a hands-on software development consultancy that helps um, customers to adapt and adopt emerging technologies to solve their business problem. We work quite a bit in the microservices space, building these type of systems for clients, and also in the data engineering space. And this talk is going to look to bring these two things together. The original title was Exploring Microservice Boundaries. I'm actually going to expand that a little bit more and speak about application architecture because it fits slightly better. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off and we're going to first have a look at the sort of hypothesis. What does it actually kind of mean to explore a microservices architecture through network science? What am I trying to talk about here? This is going to require we delve a little bit into the theory side of things, a little bit of graph theory and network science, and then we're going to use that theory to practically apply it to a microservice architecture and see how can we use those, those measures to be able to get some insight into the system. So the first thing is the hypothesis. What is it that I'm actually trying to say here? So I think the first thing I'd really like to say is that um, we really should be able to get to the point where we can do more data-driven architectural <coughs> improvement. So specifically, I think it's important to try and extract some key sort of metrics and KPIs from your microservice architectures, and using network science is one way that we can do that. And then we use that to gain insight into the system and to be able to use it to improve the, the characteristics of our architecture. So we're limited in time, so we're going to look at a specific uh, sort of area, and we're going to see, can we use some of these metrics to detect some maybe bad architectural smells, microservice smells, like a tightly coupled architecture or the like. But first, we've got to start with a little bit of theory just to set the scenes so that we can then practically apply that to our microservices. So first up, very high level, some graph theory. So what is a graph? So a graph is really just a formal representation of a network or a collection of uh, related objects. So this could be a social network or a microservices architecture, as we're going to have a look at. It's based on maths, and the maths is important because it allows us to run different algorithms and metrics on any kind of network and gain some insights. So we're going to have uh, the entities in there are called nodes or vertices. In our system, that's going to be the individual microservices. The connections between them are the relationships. And for our purposes, we're going to have the dependencies that exist between different microservices. So A depends on B, or B depends on C. So I'm going to introduce you to three uh, specific sort of measures and algorithms, and then we're going to, we're going to apply that practically. The first one is what's called the degree of a node within a network. So the degree of a node is very specifically it's just how connected is this specific node. So if we take this example, we can see that A is more highly connected than B and C because it has six connections going in and out of it, whereas B and C have only got two. So that's the first measure that we're going to use. The next one is something called a cluster coefficient. Now this is maybe a little bit more difficult to explain, but I will, I'll use an example. But it's basically trying to look at how tightly coupled a group of nodes is compared to how tightly coupled it could be. So if we pretend this was a social network, and we've got this blue person who knows three people, the question we're really trying to ask is how well do those three people know each other? So in this case, we can see that most of them know each other, but not everybody knows each other, so the cluster coefficient comes out at about 66%. We've got a 66% probability that everybody in that group knows each other, and it's, it's a tight-knit group. If we have a look at it from the other side, that blue person knows three people. They all know each other, therefore it's a perfect cluster coefficient. It's essentially 100%, and it's a very tight-knit group of, of friends. And what we're going to find is that we, and when we apply this to a microservice architecture, it can help us to be able to look at what are really highly connected services, and maybe we need to look at that as, as part of an architecture. The final sort of algorithm uh, that I just want to introduce you to is something called community detection. So community detection, there are various different algorithms, Levain and stuff, that you essentially run across your entire network, and what this algorithm does is it has a look at all the different connections within the, the network itself. It tries to partition the graph into related areas. So it might say, well, those purple ones look like they're more clustered together than the blue and the, the, the orange ones. And then you as a human can look at what the system has, has done for you and say, OK, I recognize the purple ones as belonging to this group of microservices or, or something else. 
So, with that very, very basic sort of theory under our belts, we're now going to dive in and see how can we apply uh, some of that to exploring microservices as a network. So, our first architecture that we're going to have a look at, um, you don't really need to understand what's going on here. Um, essentially, all that we're interested at this stage is that we want uh, some way we need to be able to get hold of the microservices in the system and, and graph them out, including the dependencies between them. And there's various ways that you can do this, and I, I won't go into that, but uh, doing it dynamically is definitely the better way to do it. But even visualizing that in and of itself is quite helpful just to get some structure uh, in terms of what's going on. But we want to see, can we apply some of those metrics to get more insight into something, even if we have no idea what it is to begin with? So we go ahead and we say, all right, let's run our algorithms and our metrics, and we come up with some stats like that. So we've got the degree, and we've got some cluster coefficients. We've got some average of, averages of these across the network. Quite hard to figure out what's going on there. So if we put that into a chart, we can start seeing a little bit more. So here we can see these are all of the degrees for all of the different nodes in this microservice architecture. And there's about 20 nodes in here. And what we see is that the top six nodes have got a degree of at least six or more, which means that somewhere in this network, there are six nodes that have at least got six connections coming in and out of them. And that's potentially our first clue that that's doing quite a lot of work, and maybe it's going to be part of something that we need to look at a little bit more closely. So if we apply our second, our second metric, which is the cluster coefficient, we can see that actually for a majority of, of the services, they have zero. They, they actually don't have, they're not speaking to any other microservices which themselves are speaking to other ones. However, the top seven have got a cluster coefficient of 0.6 and above. So there's some of them that have got a 60% probability of all the services they're talking to are also speaking amongst themselves. And what we want to do is also have a bit of a closer look at that. Now, to get some perspective, we've got to, we've got to use a bit of intuition as well. So we've got to ask somebody, do you have some kind of idea as to what this system is? And we find some kind of architecture diagram that a, uh, uh, an architect has drawn for us. And we land up with uh, our system that's looking a little bit like this. So we've got those top uh, dark circles, which are the front end services, so a web UI, mobile UI some light blue ones, which are the back-end services. You don't need to know the, the specific details, but they're doing all of the, the sort of core back-end work. And then we've got some purple ones on the side, which are acting as an adapter to speak to different external interfaces. So we've got some shipping things and some, some payments on the other side. But it's already worth noticing that we can see there's already this big ball of mud over here that, that seems to have you know, come up in our architecture. And Let's see if the science can actually tell us that that is problematic or not. So we take, the, uh, we take these uh, measurements and we graph them out. And what a lot of people will do is they'll, they'll say, OK, well, let's start with the averages. What's the average cluster coefficient and degree? And you land up with, you know, those are the lines down the bottom there, about 0.3 and 3.6. But that doesn't really tell you very much. What will really give you more insight is to look at the top offenders and, and then use a bit of intuition as well to, to see what's going on. So I've highlighted here the top. This is looking from the degree perspective, the top six offenders who have got a degree of six or more. And we can see that it's highlighted pretty much all of our back-end services in our microservice architecture. Uh, and they all seem to be connected to the big ball of mud. The top offender is actually the shipping facade, which has got 14 uh, connections. So it's part of the big ball of mud, and it's also speaking out to various different shipping uh, companies. Um, so it's got one of the highest degrees. That's interesting. But let's have a look at the cluster coefficient. What are, what are the top offenders here? So now if we have a look at that, it's highlighted, including the, the front-end services of our, our big ball of mud. And the top seven offenders uh, there have got a cluster coefficient of uh, 0.6 or above, so 60% or more. And what's interesting about this is that, you know, just logically, if you think about those front-end services, uh, they're going to have to, you know, if it's your web UI, you're going to have to call various back-end services in order to produce your, your function. So if you're trying to produce an order or something like that. But what's really important is to look at um, the combination of these two metrics. 
So if you just look in isolation at the degree, that might not tell you, uh, it will tell you some information, but if you look at them collectively, they potentially are pointing to the fact that this big ball of mud over here is actually what we would call a distributed monolith. Now, what's happened specifically in this architecture is that it's actually uh, exhibiting an, an, an entity services anti-pattern. So if you look at this, you'll see there are some microservices called the order service and the user service and the product service. And what typically happens is a classic symptom when you implement entities as your microservices is that your front-end services, let's say you want to uh, ship an order, you've got to speak to the user service and the product service and the shipping service and everything, and you land up with a lot of coordination amongst everybody just to get stuff done. So that's interesting. Let's see if we can see more insight. What happens if we run our community detection algorithm across this? So here we can see that the system has highlighted three main areas. So these are the same graphs. Um, the the left-hand graph is actually coming out of Python or a Jupyter notebook, but it's pretty hard to figure out what's going on there. So I've superimposed the, uh, the colors onto, uh, onto the architecture diagram. And we can see that the system thinks there's three main areas. So there's kind of the big ball of mud, and then there's the yellow area, which looks like it's a little bit more of the shipping type stuff. And we've got this purple area, which is the, the payment side of things. And this has also confirmed to us that we've got something which is very tightly connected, uh, which is our big ball of mud, and uh, two other areas, as I said, which is the payment and the shipping. What is interesting is that this may not have been some of the original intention from the people putting the architecture together. So if any of you have done microservices, you will have heard you must do domain-driven design, you must have your user domain, and your, you know, split it out into appropriate business uh, logic. But we can see that this is all completely muddled up in this, in, in this distributed monolith that we have here. And the insight that this can potentially bring if you're trying to look at your architecture can be quite interesting. So maybe you're struggling to release uh, because you've got hundreds of things that need to be released at the same time. These type of techniques can help you to discover where are the areas that you're going to struggle a little bit in terms of doing that. So that's great. But what happens if we change the architecture? So we've recognized, OK, we've got a bit of a distributed monolith. What if we try and, and, and improve it? So let's hive off maybe the user section. Will the numbers actually change? Will it actually show any improvement? So we take our user entity service, which is over there, and we decouple it, well, we break it up into more functional-based uh, sort of orientated services, and we come up with our new architecture. Again, you don't necessarily need to know exactly uh, what's going on, but we've, we've essentially decoupled it, and we're using some asynchronous um, processes to make sure we can get the data back to the monolithic side uh, so that it can still carry on. But we've done our best to make sure that actually we can operate in isolation. If we've got a team that needs to handle all of the user-related stuff, uh, this is the attempt, our second attempt at getting there. So we do the same thing. We run our stats, we get our graphs, and then we look at the data. So now, with our sort of uh, new data, we can see that from a degree perspective, the top seven offenders with sort of six degrees or more are still the entities in the, the big ball of mud. But interestingly, it's also highlighted our two new web uh, endpoints. And actually, if you think about this, this makes sense from just the degree perspective, because you've got the web UI, which is having to call the make an order, cancel my payment, etc. It may highlight a slightly different problem, that maybe you've got too much orchestration going on in one service, but in and of itself, uh, it might not be, be indicating a distributed monolith. But when we combine that with the cluster coefficient, we can see that actually the cluster coefficient is only recognizing the entities in the big ball of mud. So when we, put these two when we put these two together, we can see that it's still recognizing we've got a problem over there, but there's not necessarily a distributed monolith happening on the other side. If we run our community detection algorithm, we can see that that's changed as well. The system now recognizes that we have something that seems to be related over here, which is our user service, which we specifically try to, to hive off. And that's going to help us to be able to release and manage that more independently. We happen to have pulled in the uh, sort of shipping uh, facade into our big ball of mud, but as you improve your architecture, that will, that will carry on. 
So the summary uh, is really simple. The general hypothesis was that you, I think it's possible to start doing data-driven architectural improvements. And I think we've demonstrated that this is possible. You can extract metrics uh, using network science, and you can use that to gain insight into your architecture. We specifically looked at the degree and the cluster coefficient as a way to try and detect tightly coupled architectures. And we also use community detection algorithms to see, can we uncover related groupings of, of boundaries or microservices? And that is probably pretty much it. We did detect some anti-patterns. This is a great book if you're interested in getting more into this. This is from Mark Needham and Amy Hodler. Um, so if you're interested in this stuff, uh, do that. And uh, yeah, if you're also interested in doing these type of things, uh, I'm, we're certainly hiring, so please do come and chat with me, or if you want a microservice architecture review, or just come and chat, that'd be great. Thanks very much.